Welcome to this talk, or rather, non-talk. Uh, with ruthless efficiency, it's now one o'clock, so we're going to start this presentation. Um, first words first. Um, the presentation listing in the program lists an amount of info about what you're going to see here, what this is about, etc. Uh, you know the way programs are written before the conference? Well, uh, this is not ready. The things that we wanted to have ready for the conference didn't appear in time, didn't get implemented in time. Some of them have landed, but instead of making like a train wreck demo or kind of this is what we have so far, we're not going to do that. We're going to take an amount of time and opportunity to communicate a number of basic issues, basic precepts, basic concepts, and walk through some of the implications and then take time to give me the opportunity to talk with developers and get info about some of the workflows and some of the things that people do, people uh, use to interact with, uh, with the developer, uh, the Blender website, uh, and uh, work on a better understanding of what the future workflows, what the future precepts uh, or concepts in Giti will be. So this is also something you'll see in the presentation. Ah, nice <laughs> Again, okay, that, that was something I fixed on a different system, but this one has the same problem. So what is this? If it's not a presentation, it's a small uh, post-mortem of the talk that isn't. Uh, clarification of some terms. Uh, this was useful, uh, most likely for people who have seen uh, Fabricator, who know some of the terms that Fabricator uses for uh, different concepts within Fabricator and why they are not the same over uh, everything in Git, uh, especially the word project, for example, is a very interesting one. A uh, short overview of where we are, what we have, and then we'll take an uh, opportunity to connect and listen. Um, the practical upshot of this is that this will take about 15 minutes and not 50, uh, and then we'll take some time to either sit here or outside um, and basically do an impromptu show and tell session of, hey, I do this type of thing, how would that work? Or tell me about the process and then I'll tell you like, okay, could you tell me more about how you do that exactly so that we understand more how we will port that over into a new system. <laughs> Intel drivers, I'm not going to say anything more. Um, so uh, the intentions were to give you a show and tell, to give uh, a demo, that's not happening have all completed features running. Uh, we have a fair amount of features integrated into Git that we asked the Git uh, support uh, uh, people, support devs, to actually prepare for us. A lot of these have landed, but they have not been integrated into one artifact that I can show and, and tell, so I'm not going to do that. Um, demonstrate modes of use. There are, as you know, multiple ways of interacting with code. Fabricator has one idea of this. GitHub and others have others. I'm not going to try and do that with something that's not finished uh, because it's just not polished enough. What it is now, um, I will point you to the uh, Git repo that has a fair amount of uh, features that have landed. So the development is done on future.project.blender.org. Uh, there are pull requests from a private repo of, uh, of one of the developers uh, where you'll find more uh, more experimental iterations on some features, uh, which you can also explore. There is a gt1.dev.blender.org, which is a non-stable installation, meaning it gets reinstalled every now and then with a f new import of all the data, with new import of data concepts, uh, meaning if we have a way of rep representing pull requests in a more meaningful way, we kind of throw away what we did, had before and we put in pull requests in a better uh, uh, way than we had before. So if you look at gt1.dev.blender.org, you will see something new over time, every time you, you, you start looking there. Uh, don't start cloning stuff and <laughs> developing on that, if, even if you get a clone uh, permission, because it will not stay there. Um, you can log in on both systems with uh, Blender ID, so you don't need to ask for, a, uh, for an account. That works. Um, Blender conference took a lot of time. Uh, development work was um, a lot more than we thought it would be, specifically on the whole. Uh, if, if you saw the, um, the talk that I gave on Thursday, um, pull requests 
and the way that uh, Fabricator does not have a tight coupling with the reality of what is in Git is a challenge, has been a real, real big challenge to actually say, okay, if Fabricator has a patch, but it's not actually a pull request or, or a branch or anything in, in Git, how do you deal with that? So that development work we found more important, uh, but that kind of got more and more time. Food poisoning got in the way. I'll, <laughs> I'll save you the details. Uh, but basically, we are in a place where uh, the import of data is possible. We just didn't get to it yet in time for the Blender conference, which, as I said, might not be a bad thing because we're here all face to face. And now I have time and effort, uh, uh, opportunity to actually talk with people. And I've done that with a couple already, uh, but I'd really like to, uh, to get as many people as possible that I meet here. Um, again. I'm not a Blender developer, so I do not have intricate knowledge of the source code, nor of the development process that any specific module owner or specific developer might follow. Um, meaning I have to talk with people to understand what it is that helps them and what it is that, you know, gets in their way. Sometimes these are very simple things like UI elements. Sometimes they're much more important and they have to do with the whole concept of, okay, where do you go to do what? Why would you do that? Because the idea of a forge is that it aids a, a, a group of people to uh, coordinate and do a project together. And if it gets in the way, that is a, a bad thing. So uh, I already had, I think, eight people yesterday in one small, small room with uh, three chairs. Um, where we discussed uh, a number of uh, uh, considerations and issues. Um, there are things that we learned from that, um, but I also learned already what could be better. Now, a brief baseline is in order. Um, if you are a developer on blender.org, uh, on developer.blender.org, some of these things will uh, sound uh, familiar. We have the BF Blender project. It is a project, it has a repo inside. The repo has milestones. The milestones lead to work boards, which, uh, which basically are there to get a milestone finished in, in time for a release. And then there are sub-projects uh, that can be part of the main project, but they, we, uh, we don't use them anymore. Uh, Blender 2.8, Blender 2.7 were sub-projects. Uh, they were in uh, Fabricator as a sub-project, but now we do everything uh, mostly with milestones. People and members of groups are basically a system-wide uh, concept in Fabricator, meaning you are a person, you have access to most things uh, in Fabricator and members of, 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 a, of a project uh, are automatically also members of all the sub-projects and milestones. Tags in Fabricator are an interesting concept. Tags are the things that you uh, link to a uh, an issue or a pull request and they are interestingly enough anything so they're not really uh, considered to be anything specific they can be a project tag they can be a priority tag they can be anything it's just tag it's a tag cloud so they're not really uh, structured as much uh, but the one thing they are not are git tags so if you speak about tags in Fabricator, you're ne almost never talking about Git tags. And that's because there is a separation of Git concepts from Fabricator. And this is mostly to do with the fact that Fabricator is kind of agnostic about what kind of uh, code uh, control system is underneath because it has support for SVN. The idea of SVN tags might exist, but that's not what they're talking about when they're doing tags. Tags is just a concept within uh, within a, a fabricator in this sense. Now, that's opposite to what Git does in a number of things. Uh, Git T, like GitHub, organizes things under an organization or personal repo. So you have an organization, have multiple repositories under, underneath that uh, organization, or you have a personal account, which can have multiple repos underneath. The milestones and the workboards kind of map the same way as in fabricator, so that is preserved. And instead of the concept of a sub-project, you actually have the word project, which is just something within a repo that is a project. Um, so projects get redefined, sub-projects don't exist. 
Um, the whole concept of what Fabricator does with permissions, uh, there's a, a weird concept in Fabricator where you say, look, we'll make a project, we'll subscribe people to that project, we'll put them in there, and then we'll say this project is a permission project, and whoever is part of this project gets permissions in all the projects that take this project as a permission project. It's a bit of a convoluted way of doing uh, author, uh, authorization control. In uh, Getty, you have the concept of teams. Very simple, very flat way of do, uh, dealing things. Uh, labels are organization specific, meaning if you do anything where you create like organizations next to, let's say, the Blender organization and you make a Blender cycles organization, then suddenly you have a new label cloud. Labels are what tags are, mostly, in, uh, in Fabricator. The issue there is that if we would make a system where we say, look, you make different organizations for different Blender areas, you l uh, run into the issue that you cannot reuse labels because they mean different things. Uh, teams are not crossing organizations. So you can see how the concept of organizations and teams and labels kind of already work towards a certain organization of how uh, modules, module owners, repos kind of start to uh, work together. Now, a lot of this will not be very surprising because GitHub is, for a lot of people, a very familiar example of exactly this type of, uh, of permission and uh, hierarchy system. Tags are Git tags, meaning if you see the word tag anywhere inside of Git, it means a Git tag. So that's very important to understand. If you look at the Fabricator stuff and you see a tag somewhere and it gets ported into Gitty, it's not going to be called a tag anymore. Uh, and there's a very tight coupling to Git. Um, this, is, this has been touched in the previous talk, but very, very short recap. In Fabricator, it's perfectly possible and allowed and even encouraged maybe to send in a patch from nowhere. Just to say, hey, I made a patch somewhere. Uh, here's the text, cut, paste, post and it lands in Fabricator. Uh, Fabricator will present it as an amount of code. You can do reviews over it, you can put comments over it, you can have a whole discussion about it. But interestingly enough, Fabricator does not require you to actually tell you, uh, to tell it where that patch came from. Like, when did you, or you do kind of need to tell it when did you make it because you post the patch at a certain time so you know when it landed. But it doesn't tell, uh, you, you're not, required to tell Fabricator when you checked out the code that you worked on to create the patch. Could be five years ago. <laughs> you don't know. Um, that is not possible in modern Git forges. They really assume that there's a tight coupling to what you represent and what is physical or what is actually uh, present inside of the Git repo. Um, and that presents challenges and that's one of the, to uh, the points I talked about earlier, like, hey, how do we represent pull requests and reviews, etc. Because this uh, means that if you want to import data into Git from Fabricator, you actually have to create a history that you didn't have because it was not in Fabricator. Uh, so we, we make synthetic data that actually matches reality. Um, these slide transitions are so horrible. <laughs> I apologize again. So the takeaway so far uh, with uh, a number of explorations we did like iterations of, hey, what if we do this? What if we do that? Is that big workflow changes are neither needed nor desired. Meaning a uh, fair number of people that I've spoken say, look, with Fabricator, there's a lot of things that we don't like so much, but the basic way of how we accept things from each other or organize uh, uh, using workboards that is a method which fits the, 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 development, the, de the developmental uh, uh, model of Blender well at this moment. Doesn't mean that it won't change in the future, but that fits well. But there are some inevitable changes due to the nature of the coupling, the tight coupling to Git, meaning the way that you can now just make a patch and you know send a, a text file um, and hope it lands somewhere. That's not how it works in a future Git flow. It's just the way it is. Um, 
there is a high amount of self-coordination relative to the size of the project. So if you look at large projects like uh, with the same kind of scope in uh, code as Blender, uh, you notice or I notice that there's much more uh, attention to how uh, people are or are not allowed to be inner group, outer group, or uh, how, uh, do uh, the follow, uh, like, um, how do you call that? So if you do contributions, you need to make sure that, for example, they are free of patents, intellectual property uh, concerns, uh, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, there are projects that put a lot of emphasis on this. Uh, for better or worse, uh, Blender does not do this at, at current. We might have to for certain things, but we also make, uh, we have a, a community of developers that organically over the years have come to understand what is required from each other. So there is no real written process for a, f a number of things. They are in the heads of people who have been doing this for a long while or have been told by somebody else like, hey, I typically do this, that seems to work for me. So as long as there's no new things popping up, these, project uh, these processes seem to work well. Uh, but that means that if you just look at the Blender project and the Blender development uh, uh, cycle. This is something that is different from a lot of other uh, 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 projects out there. Um, module coordinators that we have uh, t uh, typically have a lot of uh, full say about something, meaning even if uh, there is a formal review process uh, within uh, Blender to accept new commits or new features, there are times when a commit into master is just a default way of doing things. If it's clear by the module owners uh, or coordinators uh, that this is going to land well, it's committed, it doesn't go through a review system uh, necessarily. Uh, and modules uh, are at times not really large teams. Uh, modules that consist of two, three people at most that do a lot, of, a lot or most of the work and accept outside contributions uh, uh, either on a sporadic or on an opportunistic basis uh, seems to be the norm uh, rather than uh, an exception. So this is mostly these points are like helicopter view looking at the Blender project from an outside perspective a little bit. Uh, workboards are very heavily leveraged. Uh, a lot of our coordination, a lot of the whole uh, 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 idea of how we interoperate hinges on the concept of workboards and how we can configure those and how we can make them work for a specific team. Uh, bug, fi bug fixes into LTS, so the long time re uh, support releases are at times unclear. Uh, I've heard from multiple people by now that knowing how to get a fixed bug to be accepted or known about so that it can be included in an uh, LTS release or a fix-up release of something that's uh, the current release is not always a straightforward process. It seems to work, but different people have different ideas of how this actually works. So I've had multiple descriptions <laughs> and it, it, it kind of works out in the end, but it's not actually clear what it, uh, what it is. So that needs to be looked at whatever we do and it's not really uh, dependent on Git transition, but it's, it's an interesting, interesting observation. Uh, and then there's triaging. Uh, the triaging process requires too many steps or too many things that need to be done or set to actually uh, get, tri uh, get something from being submitted, being triaged and being put into the right queue. Um, it takes to, uh, more work and more time than it should or could. So just very, very simple, a uh, very, very basic overview. This is almost insulting to most of the people who work with Git, but if you don't, uh, a little recap. What do you do typically if you, if you start working on a, on a, on a, a, a piece of code uh, when you are not already uh, a, a Blender developer uh, and you'd like to, uh, to do stuff uh, for Blender? So in the uh, future Git, uh, uh, world that we live in with Git or anything else. The idea is that you fork uh, the code to a personal repo or 
you, uh, you make a branch if you are actually part of the project itself. You pull it to local disk, you make a branch if you didn't do that uh, on, uh, on, the, uh, on the core branch already or on the core uh, repository already. Then you do your stuff, you add the changes, you commit, you uh, post a pull request from your branch into uh, something else. That gets reviewed and you do an accept and merge. Now again, the review process, we do not require for a fair number of things. So actually saying we need to do this is not a necessary step that we might want to implement. But this is what kind of is assumed in uh, the way that the Git world works. There is another one, which is uh, something that we haven't had in Fabricator yet and which will become a, uh, a reality, which is the fact that we have online edits available in uh, Git T, meaning uh, the, the documentation team is actually very happy about this concept being able to navigate to a, piece, uh, to a file to fix a typo or a translation of something and say, look, uh, I don't need to check out the whole source code. I don't need to go into my personal editor. I don't need to do add, commit, review, etc. I just want to fix this typo very quickly. So you navigate to the file. If you are not part of the orga itself, you clone it to a personal repo, you edit. You can either directly commit to master if that's uh, the thing you want to do because it's just a typo, it shouldn't break anything. Or you do a branch create pull request and you do the same type of uh, run around as you do in the previous page. So with that in mind, what are concepts that didn't make it? Or what are things that are pretty much right out? And this is mostly a, uh, a slide that I made to calm the nerves of some people who've been seeing this Gitty thing come closer and not here yet, like what is going to happen? How am I going to do stuff? We don't know yet, but we also know these are not the things we're going to get. So uh, all Blender sub projects would require a separate repo. Like let's say we, we have a, a sculpting or modeling thing. Let, we, we require you to make, you know, a, a, a sub project or a sub module or something and everything has to happen there. We're not going to do that. It really depends on the type of module, the type of work being done, the type of things that the team would like to have. All Blender sub projects become a sub module repo. Same thing, kind of the same uh, thing. All commits require reviews. We're not going to go through that formal uh, review process either. Uh, all code flows must be the same. Uh, code flows me meaning how do you actually come towards uh, having something which could be mergeable, uh, right? How do you interoperate? How do you talk with each other? How do you communicate within a, a module to say, okay, this is how we know it's now ready to be pulled into something else. And a generic Git workflow uh, is required for main projects. This we do know, meaning uh, having um, a way to coordinate all the things that we get from different parts of uh, Blender development and to know which need to be included into a release, we will have to develop one that works for Blender as a whole. So we do know that that is coming. It's a bit of an obvious uh, uh, thing, but that is the only thing where modules will not be able to have, or documentation projects, etc., will not really uh, be having a full flexibility, they will have to be able to hook into something that is uh, for the project as a whole. So what do we have? Um, we do have a reasonable translation or transposition of current operations that we do within Fabricator onto uh, uh, operations that we can do in Giti. So we've looked at the number of features that were, we uh, were missing in Giti and we asked uh, uh, developers at Giti to implement them or find ways of doing them with the tools that we have available. So that's where we are. We have an understanding of workboard uh, usage through uh, interviews with developers yesterday, before yesterday and before there. And somewhere there's white text on white background overlaid. Great. Um, a way to implement the current workflow is completely possible, so we know that that maps well. And we have a way of uh, accommodating new methods for basic actions. So um, the upshot of that point is that if we have uh, things that we are currently doing, 
we don't have to translate them one on one in the way that we do them right now. There are really a lot of ways we can do uh, the same things um, as we have access to an API, which is extendable. We have webhooks, which are exp extendable. There's support for multiple uh, standard workflows or standard operations like the agit workflow, which is another way of in interacting with a, a git forge, uh, which we might adopt parts of. Uh, so that's all things that we do have. There's, however, no demo. Um, and I would like to basically say now, like, okay, can we sit down? Because this is the time that I have where I can actually see the faces that belong to parts of the Blender development. Um, some of you have been just basically a couple of letters inside uh, uh, blender.chat in the sidebar. Uh, and uh, typing long stories is really, really hard in, uh, in there. Uh, so I would like to invite people to actually, if you have something to say about uh, developer.blender.org from even from a user perspective, um, I would like to hear from you if you are a developer uh, or even a, a module owner, I would love to hear from you. So that's what I'd like to do now. With that, uh, in, with, with whatever flows from there, I will try to make a wrap up, which I'll present in the second week of November on uh, most likely on the code blog as a Git diaries uh, uh, item, which some of you might have already seen uh, landing on there. Uh, and that will basically try or attempt to summarize the takeaways that I already presented some of, plus new takeaways that I will get from you hopefully to, uh, today uh, to get a, a bit of a broader communication towards people like, okay, this is the shape of what we're going to attempt and what's coming. So with that, let's do it. Great. Generic end slide. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Um, I don't think there's any other presentation scheduled for the next 30 minutes here, so I would uh, 